Hey y'all, it's your girl Corporate Carolyn and the Corporate Workday is well over and um, your girl has the house to herself and so I thought I would make a video. The husband um, let me out of like a family obligation that um, they were all having and he knows that I need to dye my hair um, because our 33rd wedding anniversary is next week and I don't have time to be fooling around with that fiber tint edge gel even though someone gave me um, a secret or a tip or hack to um, getting it to spread more evenly by putting that messiness in your um, in the palms of your hand and just like you know doing one quick smooth I think I did that a few days ago in addition to putting some hair mascara around the edges but I didn't really touch it up today after the walk and like from the side you can see you know the gray in between the parts and I'm not really liking that and and I don't think in the history of the world I've ever shown anybody my kitchen but um, but yeah I'm gonna try to do something about this um, either um, to color it or I'm going to just cut it off. What's the purpose of a kitchen? If I could ask God, I'd say, um, why'd you give us that? You know, all it does is just curl up and, you know, wind up getting on my nerves. So, but anyway, um, and then I would, if I were like some of these younger YouTubers or more proficient um, YouTubers, I'd be like in my shower, you know, letting you guys see, you know, me apply this, like having a camera upstairs and showing the messiness of all of this Magic Root Rescue because I use the three full boxes because I put it on all of my hair. Did they say to do that? No. Normally, I'm a follow instructions kind of person, but I'm not following their um, their instructions, and hopefully it won't lead to destruction. Um, I have been doing this for a couple of years, so, um, so that's the only color that I put on my hair. Um, I no longer go to hairstylists because things that they told me, they're not um, necessarily true or in my best interest a lot of times. Like a lot of them are just promoting um, products, getting you to buy them. And then the same person who might get you to spend over $50 on Nioxin's um, shampoo and conditioner, then later when you complain about dryness and other ailments, oh, well, you got to use the right shampoo. And I'm like, well, what about the 50 plus dollar shampoo conditioner that you sold me oh well see that's just for this and I'm like but you told me to use it or like someone else at PR at partners that was pushing Purology in a major way and I'm like my hair is dry my hair is dry well, you have to keep using it and you'll see the benefit my hair is dry my hair is dry after I put it on and um, I never saw any improvement Purology was not for me but they kept selling it to me you know and like oh I went to Wella training and they said you can do this and you can do that you know you can color and put the relaxer on and you know my hair was getting drier and shorter and um, and it was hard in fact, um, the same person who recommended all this stuff is the same one who recommended the Brazilian keratin treatment, um, you know, to help me like to wean myself off of relaxers. Oh my goodness, my hair. Um, that's what started me making videos on YouTube, um, probably back in maybe 2010, um, somewhere around there where, um, where it was just... And I hate to overuse horrible, but it was, oh, it was devastating. That's what it was. And um, in fact, someone had even recommended, because I had written a book, you know, years ago about um, um, the Black Woman's Guide to Beautiful, Healthier Hair in Six Weeks. And my hair was relaxed at that time. And I had a nice little six-week regimen going, and I only saw a stylist. Um, like every six weeks when I would get my touch-ups and then I started stretching them out to eight weeks and then to like 12 or even 14 weeks but my hair was really busted it was before I learned about aloe and I didn't really know you know nice transitioning type styles that you could um, rock while you were you know going in between um, your relaxers and so um, you know I would go to the stylist and they put the color on it and then you know my edges even though it was semi-permanent and at, de at times it was demi-permanent um, my my edges were saying time out time out stop with this relaxer color business oh but well uh you know they said you can use it and I listened and then you know my hair went from being relaxed and like down to here um to um like as I let the stylist at PR at partners um you know blow dry it every time because I was in a rush trying to get back to work and then um you know my hair just kept getting drier and drier with the purology and all of that 
foolishness that I was putting it through and it just wound up being a wreck and I just did a time out I stopped relaxing I stopped coloring for many years and um, and so now you have me being natural and you know with the aloe and everything and and you know like I'm just so thrilled with the progress like look at that look at that I don't know if you could see that it's all the way you know down here and that's without me combing it without um, any kind of blow drying and now after that experience with PR at partners um, because my hair is one where as soon as a little moisture hits it um, after you work out um, it just goes it just starts growing up and so I'm like why waste any time blow drying it when um, when clearly it doesn't want to be straight so um, you know I just don't worry about it but anyway back to what I was saying um, I would show you guys this, but I'm just not equipped. I'm not the one. And so many people say, well, why do older women not, you know, come out on YouTube and share the benefits of their wisdom and, you know, try to reach back? Um, they don't because we're tired <laughs> and YouTube is hard. It's not enough that you have to come up with great content and try to do the videos and try to like not waste people's time with the long stories, which some of us like to tell, especially me. And then also not only that, you got to do thumbnails and then, you know, you got to like do tags and descriptions and you got to upload the stuff. You got to edit the videos. Um, and then you got to do the thumbnails and then people say, well, what about chapters? And then, well, why don't you talk about this? And why don't you talk about that? And then, you know, you do your full time job and then you're just like, whoo, cha, you know, and then you need to be consistent with the videos. And it takes a while to think of what you want, you know, to share with someone and then you get something set up and then someone says, oh, your sound, like, sis, your sound is too low. And it's like, okay, then you get your son to get you a microphone that actually works. And then it's like, oh, it's too dark. You know, then you realize that trying to make videos when it's bright outside, it doesn't work. So a lot of um, well-meaning middle-aged or older women are saying, who needs this? And then you might get a few views and you think you're doing something. And so after a while, you're just like, whoo, that's a lot of work. But yet... I'm doing the absolute best that I can because I do feel that, you know, age helps you to um, to share um, a lot of the benefits of the wisdom that the Lord has allowed you to um, to achieve. And so but back to the color and speaking of wisdom. Oh, well, let me tell you about the shampoo thing first. So instead of Myel and instead of the melanin shampoo and conditioner that I tried, I'm so low budget. My husband has always called me a cheap date, which I am. I don't like really fruit, fruit, food. Um, we went to, to Paris and I ate pizza. Um, I was pregnant though, but we did eat pizza um, because I don't like much. You throw the white sauce and you put all that butter and it's all fancy and you're like, oh, it's snails. You know, it's caviar. And I don't want that. You know, I want to go to Longhorn. I want to get me a, a side strawberry um, pecan salad with some spicy chicken bites. That's what I want, you know, or maybe some fried shrimp and a nice salad. But I, I don't want all that fancy French cuisine and I don't drink wine. And so I don't drink at all. I had wine once in 1989 and I thought it was going to taste like what we had at communion. Turns out that was Welch's grape juice, which is um, why after that one disappointing experience, I never tried wine again. And I drink Welch's grape juice um, if I want, you know, that taste that I craved all those years thinking that I needed to be 21 to drink it. But anyway, so regarding the shampoo and my low budget ways, I find the same success with Herbal Essences Argan Oil Repair Shampoo and conditioner, which you can get from your local grocery store, your Walmart, or Ross. Because I got this huge bottle of the, um, oh, this is shampoo too. Oh, I have some conditioner. Where's the conditioner? Oh. And I bought some more um, at the grocery store. So I find just as much just as much success with this as I do with um, with Myel, um, with melanin. Um, with um, obviously with that Pureology business that um, that PR Partners was pushing, and also with the um, that Nioxin that um, my other hairstylist was pushing, um, the one who got me to get the um, the texturizer that um, when I first went to a person who I, who they said would cater to natural hair, she's the one who convinced me that um, that my hair was um, just too coarse and too difficult to manage. 
on its own. And so I wound up, for the people who watched me in my Afro phase, um, who would probably agree that my hair was more 4C at that time. Right now, I can see why people are saying, your hair isn't 4C. Um, my hair has aloe on it. And glory be to God, it loosens up the texture. Some people think color um, loosens up the texture, but I never experienced any loosening of my texture with color. And then again, bottom of the barrel, um, bargain basement, I use Queen Helene's Super Cholesterol Hair Conditioning Cream and you know some basic L'Oreal Paris um, um, leave-in conditioners along with a few by Kemet Biologics. Um, do I experience like major, you know, results using their leave-ins? Not really. That's one of the reasons why I'm so thankful for Aloe. But, um, but speaking of that, I'm going to do that tomorrow, but tonight I'm going to color my hair and then I'm going to plait it, maybe two plaits and maybe a third one up here, um, let it completely dry. I don't know why the Aloe, there is friction. There's not as much slip if I try to put it on freshly washed and conditioned hair. Um, it responds better being put on damp hair, like say hair that's been dried, and then I spray that Paul Mitchell Moisture pu moisture Awa Pui, what is it, Awa Pui Moisture Mist, that's what it is, um, when I spray that on, and then you know I put that aloe on there and it just like slicks down, and then I'm able to like, to like comb right through it. Um, it's it's just a godsend. I mean, it's just amazing. And for any of you who haven't tried it, hopefully you'll get a chance um, to try it. If you struggle with um, maybe dryness, um, with trying to retain length, um, especially manageability, um, that's been um, a game changer for me and a blessing, like especially at 58, for my hair, for me to be able to pull it, you know, all the way down there. And I'm not even pulling it really tightly. So it's just amazing. And I'm also doing the Nutrafol um, now with where um, I'm trying to see what results it will add to, um, you know, to my hair. And so to see if I can get it even longer than what it is. Um, because like I said, it's just such a blessing at 58 for my hair to be like this, um, when it was never like this when I was eight, 10, 18, 20, 28, um, even pregnant, I never experienced length like this. So this is brand new at 58. But what I wanted to talk about after all of that is that I think we are too hard on ourselves in so many respects. And one has to do with um, the color. Like, um, and we're hard on other women too. And so what I wanted to say about that, um, speaking of the dye, like anytime I mention dye, or if I go to other people's channel who's um, talking about um, natural color alternatives, which usually don't work. You know, oh yeah, get the coffee. Um, oh yeah, get the get the clothes. You know, get um, this, get that, get the, the the tea. You know, and most of that stuff does not work. A lot of the natural remedies that people have promoted, and I like a fool. You know, just run out and buy the stuff and try it. And maybe it works for some people, but it doesn't work for me. But I saw um, a white lady trying um, this coffee thing where you mix coffee with the conditioner. And I was about ready to do that. Um, I even bought some Folgers. And then she went through all of this trouble and to say, I don't see a difference. And I told her, I said, I was watching just to see if you would and don't feel bad because I've had the same experience when I fool with coffee. Um, coffee doesn't turn my hair colors. And other times people will um, like comment and say, have you tried henna? And I'm like, yes, I've tried henna. I say it nicely, but yes, I've tried henna. And then you try to satisfy like some of the comments of people who say, well, maybe you should try henna with indigo. Been there, done that. And then when you do that and you mention, I think it was ancient sun rise oh man it took for, it took hours and my it was so messy and not only that but my hair wasn't like this my hair was like tightly you know coiled in the afro thing that um some of the people who used to know me on youtube um they would see my afro um you know real tight um the times where the afro was a little looser I had a texturizer. I wound up having to let that grow out. So I've had like almost every horror story you can think of and almost every um, issue that you could imagine. But anyway, so even once I did that with the henna, um, some people wrote and said, oh, well, um, you know, henna doesn't, you know, turn your hair black. If you're using indigo, then it's not natural. You really can't win once you start sharing your story.
hurt. But there's one thing that I don't really appreciate. It's like when I go to those channels and people are trying to find solutions to um, color their hair. Cause like they're obviously, you know, catering to the people who say you need to do natural. You know, you need to stop using the permanent color because that's why your hair is thinning. Um, yeah, my hair is thinning around the edges. Uh, I'm 58. There are a lot of ladies whose hair is gray that are thinning. And then people will say, oh, well, it's because, you know, they're thyroid. It's because they're in menopause. I don't know. I see a lot of young ladies um, whose um, edges are thinner than mine. And they're not coloring their hair at this point. You know, so it's just like people are just always going to comment. And if you internalize that stuff, you will be really hard on yourself. Like you won't be thankful for this successes that you have like all of a sudden I won't be thankful like oh praise the Lord look at how my hair is looking and then someone else is like well look at your edges sis I can't worry about that I have to focus on the good things and if I want to dye my hair I can dye my hair um I really don't need a lecture about well you know like um because I hear people say well wisdom you know gray hair is a sign of wisdom yeah that's nice um my wisdom is not diminished by the fact that I cover that gray. Um, to be wise, I don't have to show the world my gray. It's really my business. If you've noticed, I never tell you to go natural. I don't care if you're natural or relaxed. That's your business. I don't have to come to your house and deal with your hair and help you get ready for work and to compete in the corporate setting where you know you might feel more comfortable with your hair relaxed. That's your business. That's your journey because everybody is at a different stage of their lives. And who am I to tell you to go natural? Um, my natural journey was was hard. It is hard. Um, that's why I share about the aloe. You know, for anybody that it makes it easier for them to switch um, but that's your business and I would never think to tell someone you know you probably look 10 years younger if you dyed your hair that's not my business that's their personal choice and a lot of ladies look great with gray I just don't want to rock gray gray is not for me and that's my right. I don't need anyone to try to convince me, to lecture me, um, to tell me, um, you know, you should just embrace your gray. And there, a lot of times I'm just so nice, you know, as I'm responding to people and I don't respond in kind unless, you know, you really go too far and you make me mad. But most of the time I'm talking to people like this and there's this guy, he's gray. And um, I have a family member who's gray that's a friend of hers. And so every time I would see him, he's like, you really should let your hair go gray you really look so much better with your hair gray and I'm like I don't know you you know who are you you're not my husband my husband likes this my husband doesn't want me to go gray unless that's what I want to do and so I'm like why is it your business to tell me this and so at first you know you start to feel like a little weird and like well maybe you know I should be gray maybe I should do what they're doing but no Maybe I should do what I want to do. And so that's what I told him. And he says, well, yeah, you should do, you know, you should just try it. And I said, well, you know, I had a thought too about what maybe you should do. And he's like, what, what should I do? And I said, maybe like mind your own business. And then I just started cracking up, you know, like where I didn't want to make it like, you know, a thing where there's contention um, in a, a setting where we were all having a good time. But I just said, well, maybe you might want to mind your own business. And that's kind of what I like to say to some people, because if I want to dye my hair, I'm gonna dye my hair. If you wanna go gray, you go gray. But, um, so we're harder on other people, you know, trying to tell people you need to be natural, you know, um, all you need to do is everybody's hair is not the same. There's some people you see on the commercials. I thought my hair would just be like this. You know, that water would just get on it. And I'd be in the shower like some of these ladies you see on YouTube. And I'd just be like, oh, that's not the hair that I have without aloe. None of this will be possible. Um, and so it gets on my nerves that people want to tell you what you need to do. So far be it from me to tell you what to do. I'll tell you what my experiences are and how it might work for you and give you the information and you can make an informed decision based on your situation and your hair type. But, okay, speaking of other things, oh, for the people who've heard me talk about the zero bars, 
this is what it is. If you're not old enough, you don't know what any zero bar is because they don't sell them everywhere. Um, in fact, they sell them at Walmart and they put me in this trap, this infinite loop, because every time I use the app, um, they put it on sale. They make it $1.97. And so I just have a boatload of these in my pantry. Um, I really shouldn't, but I do. And really, I should be dying my hair while my husband's not here. But I got on a roll about this being hard on yourself. Another way that we're hard on ourselves, too, is like you see the way the, the lines are I can on my forehead when I'm talking. A lot of times in your 50s, you're like saying, oh, I have lines on my forehead. Let me get a serum. Let me get hyaluronic acid. Let me get retinol. Let me get a wrinkle, blah, 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 and put it up here. You know what I noticed? I noticed that my sons that are in their 20s, they've had the same lines on their foreheads for years. But yet, when I see it on me, like I want to run out and do something. Um, a lot of younger people have lines on their foreheads. So don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up for that. Um, laugh lines too. I see girls in their 20s that, you know, have the lines there as well. But as soon as we see it on us when we're 40 plus, we just run and go crazy and like, you know, Clinique will have something and be careful how you're trying all these different products because um, for those of you that are melanated or like, you know, um, or pigmented sisters like myself, um, you have to be careful with that because your pigment may not like it. And I bought, um, I bought something by Clinique called Turnaround Cream. Um, it caused me to have almost like a little hyperpigmentation around here where I used it because um, I was trying to deal with those lines, um, early 40s probably, and um, it caused it to lighten. And it took many years. And so like I would put sunscreen on that area for a while thinking that it would darken. I would put like a little um, like um, loose mineral powder or something that's darker than my skin tone to try to cover it up because I didn't want people to think I was trying to lighten my skin and it was noticeable to me. So it took a few years for me to um, get over the effects of the turnaround cream. I was trying to get wrinkles to turn around, not my pigment and my pigment turned around. And so like you just get so worked up and you you turn into a sucker. And um, one of my sons said, if you want to make a million dollars, just come up with a product um, with women and say that it um, does different things for your face and you can make the money because he said that we're suckers and we are in a lot of respects because especially once you hit 40 you start saying look at my forehead you know let me get um botox you don't want botox you don't know how that stuff is going to work over years and and then or let me put um and i always forget what um is it restation? I, I don't know what it is, but people get like little needles um, here to try to plump that stuff up and it'll just cause swelling in the future. Um, I'm not going to touch it. And in one of the videos that I did recently, I was talking about don't have work done. And, um, and this is one of the areas. Don't just leave it alone. Leave it alone. I saw someone who tried to get rid of a devil, a double chin and um, she wound up having this major swelling and she had to do like these teas like to try to um, like to drain um, all of the lymphatic fluid or whatever that had built up in her neck. Um, when I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, what if it stays like this? Um, and then another thing, um, a lot of times we're hard on ourselves, like, you know, wanting bigger boobs and wanting to go have surgery and stuff when, um, you know, a good push-up bra can take care of that. Um, or like doing some um, HIIT workouts that have um, burpees and push-ups and things um, to strengthen those pec or pectoral muscles behind your um, behind your boobies. I mean, that would give you like a natural, um, you know, boob lift or, you know, breast lift. Because um, even my husband used to make jokes. He was like, you know, who's paying for these um, breast jobs that you've gotten? Um, because, um, you know, I haven't seen you pay for anything. So somebody must have gotten your boobs done because um, my boobs have gotten better over the years, surprisingly, and I believe it's the push-ups and the burpees, but, you know, a lot of times we're just being so hard on ourselves. We're saying, well, she has a C-cup and she has a D-cup. Why do I have this? Be happy with what you have and just, you know, um, do the best that you can to, um, to improve it or to boost it. Um, 
literally. And so let's see, what else, what else are we hard on ourselves? Like stretch marks, um, you know, like dimpled skin and stuff. If you look at some girls in their, you know, late twenties, you know, maybe in their thirties, they might have a little cellulite or uh, cellulite. I don't know what you call it. I haven't said it in years, but anyway, whatever it is, they have like a little dimpling on the back of, of their thighs. So why is it that it's the end of the world? You know, as soon as you get over 40. So I just say, cut yourself some slack. Stop giving yourself such a hard time. You're beautiful. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't compare yourself to a Beyonce, you know, or to a Rihanna or Rihanna. Um, be your own kind of fine and, um, and give yourself a break because you're beautiful just the way that you are. A lot of times we just need to work on the gifts that we've been given, but um, not to compare ourselves, not to beat ourselves up, um, just to keep working with what you have. That's what I do with my hair. And that's why I'm amazed that um, that it has grown as much as it has and, you know, the texture of it. And, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good in the skin that I'm in because so many years I didn't feel good. And so at 58 to finally get that, that's another beautiful part of aging. Um, someone said they love menopause. I haven't gone to that extent. But what I do like about aging is you start to accept yourself a little bit more. So if I could reach back and, and yell to my younger, you know, sisters, like from an Auntie Carolyn perspective, I'd say, hey, hey, you're fine the way you are. Stop being so hard on yourself. Stop beating yourself up. You're wonderful. You're beautiful. You might need to exercise. You might need to drink you some more water and eat you some more leafy greens and take your vitamins, but you're wonderful just the way that you are. So don't be hard on yourself. Um, don't let anybody be hard on you and don't be hard on other women because we're all on this journey and we're learning and making it up as we go along. And so, um, so that's all I wanted to say to you. Um, you know, just stay on a good path and you'll wind up where you're supposed to be. And who knows when you're 58 or older, you know, you'll say, yeah, you know, I got it going on. And I finally just got to that point where I think for me, I have it going on and you do too. So hopefully that spoke to someone out there to love yourself a little bit more. And then I don't know why I told y'all all about this stuff, but I didn't want to do a separate video on it. So, so hopefully it adds value, but I'm going to go and dye my hair. I don't feel like it, but it must be done. So, but until the next time guys, have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.